Welcome, hi, hello. If you've never been here before, my name is Bryony and I do cruelty-free and vegan makeup reviews and tutorials on this channel, but we recently got married. So I want to share with you the things that I did for DIY, for secondhand, all that sort of stuff that I've done and the recommendations that I have after going through it all. I'm gonna be including clips and pictures from the big day so you can see how everything all worked out and hopefully you'll be able to gain stuff from this as well. If you're interested, um, I also did my own wedding makeup which I will list for you just up here and also I've done a full cost breakdown of our wedding as well. I don't know which order these videos are coming out in because I'm filming literally four videos in one day. You're welcome. Dedication. I'm also doing kind of like a review of our wedding day with Brandon as well so you can get his perspective on everything as well of how our fully vegan wedding went down. So obviously you know that I am very environmentally minded when it comes to everything that I do. I try and make sure that things are as low carbon footprint as possible. Um, I've made a few videos um, relating to this sort of stuff in the past. Even though I do love cosmetics, it's the way that you purchase them, it's how you use them, it's who you buy from, it's things like that. But when it comes to a wedding, it's very easy to waste a lot of resources. So here's all of the steps I took. So we had two and a half years to actually plan for the wedding because we paid for everything ourselves. And obviously by buying secondhand and upcycling and painting a lot of stuff myself, by doing so much literally myself, it meant that we could have a wedding that was like incredible for a much smaller budget. So first off, the first purchase that I made was a cake topper. I know this sounds really weird, but all you need to do is like disinfect the stick and it cost me 10 bucks to have this beautiful always and forever cake topper and that's literally like the poem that Brandon proposed to me with were including those words and we included them in the vows that we wrote as well so yeah it was really really sweet so for me it was a no-brainer to pick this up so I actually got that from one Facebook group so I live in New Zealand if you don't know and so there's these buy sell swap and free wedding groups if you can get a secondhand cake topper do it like I'll be selling it on as well like obviously you just disinfect it and then you can reuse it and you're totally sweet good to go next thing that I was hunting for were flowers so these flowers that you see behind us they were actually originally planned to go on all of the tables but because I found a florist that could actually use local flowers um, I instead actually used the bouquets that the bridesmaids were carrying and put them in the vases on the tables instead, but we had five tables, four of us. So that meant that there was one table that got the original design. Very important for me with the florists that they use locally grown flowers. Most of the flowers in the world are from Holland, and so the carbon footprint on that is massive so I really really wanted to make sure that everything was as local as possible. She actually got all of the flowers from literally just the like effectively like the village over from the city that we got married and then it was just the purple roses that she got from Auckland so that is a hell of a lot more local than getting it from literally the other side of the world from New Zealand so it's very happy that we were able to do that show you properly all of this sort of stuff so for example with this lavender so I got a whole lot of lavender which included all of these um, there were bunches of them, but they were actually filthy. So I found these on effectively like the America's version of Craigslist. It was just on Trade Me and they were selling five bunches of fake um, lavender for 10 bucks. And so I picked them up and they were covered. You see how like you can sort of still see like a little bit of like this kind of gluey gunky mess. So I literally washed them twice. Yes, I was washing fake flowers. Yes. That's the life that I have been living. The roses, I got heaps and heaps of roses for $30. So all of these and I managed to pick up all these other flowers and other greenery. Like this greenery was $5 for a stem of it and it was like massive stems of them. Super, super cheap. And so I literally was just, just spent two years <laughs> getting these. So you can really see 
um, what you can find. Also because I knew that I was going to be making the signs myself, um, or at least, you know, like upcycling from whatever signs I could find, I wanted to get like small fake flower packages, you know, like the ones where they're kind of more individual. Again, I went on to Trade Me and I was having a look for ages. You have to do a lot of scouring with stuff, but at least if you're online shopping um, or online thrifting, I guess, because there's not very many decent thrift stores here in New Zealand and you don't get very high quality fake flowers here as well. That's something that's really lacking, um, let alone for second hand. So <laughs> there was this guy that was actually selling like a box of like just loose flowers, like loose fake flowers. So I picked that up for $15 and that meant that I could decorate all of our frames with that as well and it turned out beautifully. I already knew the wedding colours that I was going to go for. I knew that I wanted to have like a dusty pink. I knew I wanted to have some light pinks in there. White was going to feature and definitely lavender is Brandon's favourite so I wanted to include a lot of purples and lavenders and stuff in there as well. Think about Barbie colours but muted. That was sort of the vibe that I was going for which is exactly what we got. <laughs> the next thing that I bought, so you've seen the pictures of our aisle. It was so so cute and the boys actually set those uh, little hearts up but those hearts on sticks that's also second hand so I picked those up for 30 bucks. I didn't really want to have like a full runner or anything but I wanted something that was like setting the scene and I didn't want to spend heaps on getting flowers to go on all of the aisles and do all that sort of decoration stuff because it was just too much. Little hearts on sticks. You can make them yourselves I believe it's just like a few skewer packets and then you have to Effectively, if you have like a heart stamp, you can actually cut them out yourself and do that, but getting a heart stamp here in New Zealand is very challenging unless you are confident enough to be able to like cut out that shape perfectly and because there were around about a hundred of them, you have to cut out two hearts for each, so I'll be cutting out 200 hearts and for me, the time to cost benefit ratio didn't really work out all that well. The next thing that I bought were my vases. So you can see on uh, the tables like there were these beautiful um, like skinny vases um, that had like a crisscross design going down them. So beautiful vases for 20 bucks. There were six of them and they had two varying heights. There were some that were about that high. There's about this much height difference and it actually worked out great because there were six of them and originally we were going to have six tables and then when we moved house the movers kind of smashed a lot of the things that I'd bought but anyway you can buy vases really cheap at second hand and get a great deal. Speaking of vases the other thing that I was doing was I was going around to um, goodwill shops like hospice shops and things like that and so just checking out in the local area, checking out in other areas as well for vases or anything, but I figured getting vases that were all the same would provide a lot more of a high class sort of look to everything. So that's exactly what I did with those vases, which worked out perfectly. Now you'll see like I had also little miniature, like there were sherry glasses, literally just sherry glasses. So there were three of those on each table and so I managed to pick those up as well from a different second hand shops. So around about like three bucks or six bucks for a pack of six of them. And so if we had three per table times five tables, it's 15. But we also lost um, about five of those because of the movers smashing them again, which was great. It's just those little things that you can pick up around the place because there are so many sherry glasses, so many, because no one drinks sherry anymore. And I know that not everyone wants to have like high up centerpieces. Sometimes you just want to have like those quite low ones then everyone can easily see each other. So yes, that's what um, I would definitely recommend for that. Speaking of centerpieces, another thing that I got was candelabras. So this was something that took quite a bit of online scouring because not many people want to sell them for cheap. And uh, the cheapest one I managed to find was $5. And the most expensive one I wanted to find was $30 and that was $30 for a set of two. And then what I did was I actually spray painted all of them with a metallic, like, you can get this special galvanized sort of stuff. So I spray painted them all with that and we did that before we had to move house and again the movers kind of chipped that up, scratched up a lot so that's meant that like the paint has kind of come off in parts of them but then it can make it look a bit more authentic. Lived in. It would take too much for me to like scrape off all the paint and then like spray it back on because that was just too much to try and handle so I didn't end up doing that. The frames. So we had like 
a bunch of big frames that I wanted to use for signage. So I literally just went on to, again, Craigslist, Trade Me, and I was just typing in pictures, pic picture frames, like whatever. And I picked up like really nice frames for like dirt cheap. And so I could have like these big, big signs that I really wanted to have to like welcome people in and then tell people like the order of events and stuff. And so that's literally what I did. So it's just finding those second hand. And because I hired like the easels because I was looking at like buying those second hand, but then they cost about the same amount to hire them. And I'm like, considering the fact that we got married in another city, it would be way too hard to try and drag those down along with the signage I'd already made. Like our car was so full, <laughs> it was jam packed full of stuff. So there was literally no more space. You're getting married in your own city or somewhere that's local and you can easily transport stuff. You can always look to try and get easels secondhand as well. Same as arches, there are a lot of people that hire arches. And so that's what we did for our arches as well. But you can always, um, find those ones getting sold secondhand and so you can just continue the cycle effectively. Luckily I actually found the one that's got the string going across it. So that sign was already like that but it had like an ugly laminated thing attached to it with the pegs and stuff and so I just redid that. I had to redo that signage literally on the wedding the evening before the wedding as well because the owner's son came and scribbled all over my handiwork, which I had to redo five times and also ripped off a bunch of flowers. So I was like, oh God, <laughs> something always has to go wrong. Plus it was on a Friday the 13th. I was basically asking for it. Now I should really talk about the signage because I luckily can somewhat paint from my childhood. I'm not, I'm not a painter at all. I'm not skilled at all, but I kind of know some basics in how to paint a little bit or at least keeping a steady hand and drawing and stuff so because we had a very Disney themed wedding I literally just printed out silhouettes of like the couples put that up against the window drew literally drew out the outline and then I followed a tutorial on YouTube as I learn everything from YouTube as we all do just showing you how to create like a galaxy look from that and so then that's exactly what I did and then those became our literal um, signage for our centerpieces. And those frames I also picked up from a secondhand shop, all of them for $6. All of the ones that you see on the tables, six bucks for all of them. Like you can get things for so cheap. And I just, the ones that didn't have a stand at the back, literally I just like put a bit of tape around them and then lent them against the vases because that was the whole intention it was just they get they're just gonna lean against the vase and that's fine that was done another thing that we did was i wanted to make a way to have place cards combined with favors and of course you know that there could be so much waste when it comes to weddings so i decided to get seeded paper instead and so i got these beautiful little hearts from a very local company make sure that when you're buying these that you're actually checking with what you're allowed into your country because there are really cute designs that you can get from all over the world however you're not allowed to actually germinate them in different countries so make sure that you look out for that and so i just wrote everyone's names on these just did it by hand and it was really cute so then that means that not only will this not go to waste but it's also people's favors as well and there's no actual rubbish made from your wedding as well which is perfect so I managed to pick up two giant sheets of paper for about seven bucks, I think it was, like high quality paper. So then I um, actually just traced everything out, drew it up and worked with Brandon to make sure that he liked what I did for the order of events um, and also for Welcome to Our Unplugged Wedding. In terms of the stuff that I wanted to get second hand, but I actually found out it was a lot cheaper to hire instead. That's kind of what I want to talk about right now. When it comes to hiring things, I found it a lot easier to hire an arch, hire the candy floss machine, hire the wishing well, hire the easels as well. So those sorts of things, it's much, much easier to just hire them as opposed to having to haul yourself or your car or if you have the ability to have a trailer, because if you don't have a trailer, it limits the amount of things that you'll be able to actually buy second hand if you don't have a trailer or access to a trailer or at least a massive car. One thing to note when you are renting stuff is the fact that you need to make sure that the stuff is clean before it goes back, like with the candy floss machine. We spent a long time clearing up that sugar, like there is a lot of stuff that you'll still need to do. Otherwise you'll have to pay heaps extra. That was just one thing I want to highlight to people. 
read the terms and conditions because uh, they can really screw you over with a massive fee. <laughs> we also hired the guys suits. We couldn't really afford to buy suits for people because again we paid for everything ourselves so we just hired them. They worked out really great like they weren't uncomfortable on any of them. It's like Sure, they don't look like they're wearing Armani, but we don't have an Armani budget. They all looked really good. Everyone felt comfortable on the day, it included a shirt, and it was around about $750 for a two-piece suit for all the guys, including a shirt and the tailoring, and also a three-piece suit for Brandon. So that was for four sets of suits and shirts. That's a really good deal. The bridesmaid dresses in New Zealand you don't really have places that you can hire them from unless you are about a size 6 to an 8 and which is around about a size 0, 0 to a size 2. If you're not fitting in those categories there's no way that you can hire dresses so we had to buy those dresses but I know that in other countries they have like amazing services to hire stuff from so I'd recommend that. The same as my wedding dress, I was originally going to get a second hand one but when I tried it on in store, because I left the date too late, which really makes me sad. I left the date too late. I tried on the dress, the new dress, because I was going to be getting it from America secondhand, because it was the one that I loved, and she had like similar measurements to me. Um, so I tried it on, and then with my uh, thickness meant that I actually couldn't walk comfortably so I was just like nah, this isn't gonna work and this was too close this was three months away from a wedding date and that so I spent like a week trying to find something else secondhand that would be in my size and the sort of style that I like and the alteration time it would take it was yeah it got to be too much so I had to buy a new dress but I will be selling it on secondhand and it's already been cleaned, it's in perfect condition because I was so, so careful with that. And I just want, if if you are either selling your dress on or if you are looking to get a second hand dress, make sure that you look at the condition it's in, make sure it's been cleaned. It made me very sad that I couldn't actually get a second hand dress, like that really broke my heart for a, a long time. Like I love the dress that I got, but it still kind of kills me that I got a brand new dress, you know what I mean? Just feels like it went against my core ethics. Speaking of ethics and jewellery, we got it designed by a New Zealand designer. They only use ethically sourced metal and gemstones and also my sapphire in here is a pink sapphire. It's also ethically sourced. We're very careful with that so same. These are my earrings that I wore on my wedding day. This is a necklace that I wore on my wedding day as well. Beautiful, beautiful pieces and it's actually made by this person called Pretty by Susan Jewelry that we found on Etsy. She actually creates all of these herself. Like she sources the cubic zirconia from where you can source cubic zirconia from. Like she tries to source most of it from America but sometimes you have to get it from China. But she produces it all herself and designs them herself and it's her own little business that she runs from her garage at home after she got ill at work and she got injured so much she couldn't actually return to work so she made her hobby into a, her career and I'd rather support someone that does something like that so have a look at those small businesses around you if there's a way that you can actually support them instead and with our wedding guest book as well so that one we got from Etsy too and it's a beautiful perspex heart and because again our numbers were actually lower than we were anticipating to be able to come to the wedding I mean like we couldn't have any of our overseas guests come so with the remaining hearts from the perspex heart that weren't filled in I painted them in our wedding colours and um, I was originally thinking about doing the hearts in white or like a pinky white but then I was like oh that's too girly so I literally just did the bridesmaid and groomsmen colours so I did a wisteria purple and a light grey which was the colour of the bridesmaid dresses and suits because I thought it was a really cute way to tie that in. Those are all the things that I did to try and make things um, more sustainable, more ethical and just try and lower our carbon footprint because weddings and events create a lot of carbon and I'll also link down below a website that you can actually offset carbon credits as well if you're at all interested in doing things like that. I think that is everything I have to share. I don't think that we can carry on any longer. Amazing. Perfect. So that is literally how we managed to pull off our wedding in a more 
eco-friendly, sustainable, recycled, upcycled, rented sort of way. And share down below if there are any tips, tricks or secrets that you've got as well because any way that we can help each other to reduce carbon footprint, to um, show people where you can buy more ethically, I think is a really important and good thing. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe so I come up with new videos every week. And whilst we're in lockdown, I'm coming up with two videos a week as well. So I'll see you lovelies again very soon. Bye!